So James Reason is a British professor of psychology who is really the, um, the primary um, original researcher of error science. And he stated that we cannot change the human condition, but we can change the conditions under which humans work. And that's really just recognizing the fact that human fallibility is a constant. And that puts the onus on us when we're not in the midst of an error uh, to build systems that are going to accommodate for the fact that errors will happen. So we need to be on constant defense against errors happening. So he developed this classic model of how errors actually occur in organization called the Swiss cheese model. Um, and the way to think about errors happening is of having layers of defenses like slices of Swiss cheese. So those slices of cheese are barriers to errors actually happening. Um, so if the, the risk is over on that right-hand side, the actual error is that loss on the left-hand side that happens when an error starts on the, the hazard side and goes through sequential lined up holes that have allowed that error to get through our defenses. So those holes come in two different flavors. Um, one type of hole are latent conditions. Latent conditions just means fixed conditions, and those are inherent to the, the way that we built those defenses. So those are things that are baked into our protocols and procedures and safety measures that we have in place that create the environment that we practice medicine in. Active failures are another type of, uh, of error. And active failures are unpredictable. Um, active failures are, um, are failures that happen when an individual makes a mistake. So that means that they're unpredictable and they can occur anywhere at any time. So that means that we can't directly prevent them. We can't just um, go ahead and, and change our structure to make sure that hole isn't there lining up. What we can do is build enough redundancy that a random hole in our defenses isn't going to be fatal for us. So when we look um, at the types of errors that are actually breaching our defenses and getting through these sequential slices of Swiss cheese, there are two categories. One is cognitive limitations, and that's really referencing human limitations. Um, so cognitive limitations really refers to the fact that there's a limit to what we can do as people. And in order to, to apply rules appropriately, that means we have to have enough knowledge to know the context that we're applying rules in. We need to know what the rules are. We have to have enough working memory and freedom from distraction to actually think through a situation and apply the rules as intended. Systems failure um, is a little more clear cut and that refers to exactly what it sounds like, the holes in the system that have allowed the errors to occur. Next slide, please. So to get a little bit more granular in talking about the types of errors that we see, uh, that Wallace study looking at medical error reporting in, in different environments uh, identified that, that first of all, only 15% of errors that occurred resulted in patient harm. 8% resulted in permanent morbidity or death. But behind all of that is 85% of medical errors never actually reaching the patient in a way that was, was obvious to the practitioner or to the patient. And the, the types of errors that, that did result in harm or did reach the patient were drug errors and failures of communication. And drug errors are a recurring theme in human and in veterinary medicine. It's the most common type of error to occur. So another way to look at the type of medical errors um, is actually in looking at liability claims. So these are gonna be our most severe errors that definitely resulted in harm to a patient, um, enough so to, to prompt a liability claim. So Oxtabi et al. did an insurance records review um, and found that of the errors that, that met that high standard of starting a liability claim, 51% of those errors were cognitive limitations. So it came down to a human error 
in the end. Um, so that's a slip, a lapse, a forgetting, um, really the human activities that happen every day uh, that led to the error reaching the patient. So when we think about how are we going to prevent those errors? Well, I just talked to you about how 51% of the errors in that one study um, came down to cognitive limitations. So it is very comforting and very satisfying to find one person who's to blame. Um, so we can say cognitive limitations, all right, that means that there was a practitioner who did bad. They are the villain. Um, they weren't paying enough attention. They weren't doing good enough. Um, but really, if you step back and look at the, the context, remember those cognitive limitations are something that we need to accommodate for. So we need to build defenses into our systems to try and prevent those, those lapses from reaching a patient. Um, and also we just need to, um, to give our, our practitioners, our providers, access to the, the resources that they need to have um, solid cognition. They need to be free from distractions. Um, they need to be able to focus on the work that we're doing. 